I'd like to tell you a story about my wife and uh, daughter Moira. That's a story that I think is recorded in William McDonald's exciting book called Living Above the Average. If you haven't read that book, you really ought to get a hold of it. Wonderful stories of God's work in the lives of people uh, available from Gospel Folio Press. Well, let me begin with these beautiful words recorded by Isaiah and then repeated by the Lord Jesus at 30 years of age. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The Lord Jesus effectively was saying that everyone has a point of vulnerability, if you can find it. There are always weaknesses, heartaches, difficulties that are a place for people to enter in and to minister to the needy and perhaps bring them to the Lord Jesus. Now, I did a great deal of traveling in my younger days, preaching the Word of God all over the world. And my dear wife, who's the hero in the story, she raised seven children many, many weeks on her own. And uh, with that many children, it was difficult for her to get out too much to share the gospel. She had made some efforts to reach our neighbors. In fact, on one occasion, uh, the phone rang and it was someone asking if she would collect for the heart fund. And at first she demurred, but then she returned the call and said, maybe I will, because she thought maybe she could also collect for her own heart fund for the Lord. And so she and our youngest, uh, our first child rather, uh, John, uh, they went door to door among the neighbors and looked for opportunities to come back and to share the gospel. But uh, many of these women were self-satisfied They had paid off their mortgages, raised their children, church attenders felt quite self-satisfied and really didn't feel any need for salvation. And uh, so with the kind of frustration that comes as the Lord Jesus felt it when the people who had been invited to the supper began to make excuses, uh, she got down one day in the living room as she was praying and said, Lord, your word says that if the ones who are invited won't come, go into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. But I can't do that with these children. But if you send someone to me from the highways and byways, then I'll speak to them about you. Just then, she heard beep, beep, beep. It was a garbage truck that was backing up. We lived on a corner and this vehicle was backing around to make it along our street. There was a house on the corner. As she looked out the window, she saw that the the garbage man was favoring himself as he threw the trash into the truck. And so uh, she made her way out to the curb where our garbage can was waiting. And when the man got out of the vehicle, um, she said to him, uh, like, what is the problem? Do you have a bad back? And he said, no, actually, I have a bad heart. She said, well, what are you doing throwing trash all day? And he said, it's the only job I can get. She said, well, here, let me throw in the trash. And so she (laughs) threw in the trash from our garbage pail. So he was appreciative of that. And and she said to him, you know, you need to look for another job. I'll pray for you, but, but you need to, you know, research and see if you can find something better. And so away he went. Well, the next week when he came around, she was waiting for him at the curb and uh, she threw in the trash. So he he said to her, uh, Mrs. Nicholson, um, I believe in God and, and heaven and all that, but there has to be another another step. Is there another step? And she was very happy to share with him that step, putting his faith simply in the finished work of the Lord Jesus. 
And so he thanked her and got back in the truck and away he went. Well, as he returned the next week again, um, he, he didn't really believe when she said that we would pray for him. But as he was going around the block, he met my little daughter, Moira. She was the sort of kid that, you know, chased butterflies and hopped all the hedges and talked to strangers and had, uh, she was just a little ray of sunshine. And, and she saw him and she said to him, hey, mister, we pray for you at our house. And then he knew it was true. So the next time as he came around, uh, he said to, to Louise, as she was standing by the curb, well, I did it. And she thought, what, um, applied for a job? No, he said, I, I took that next step. <laughs> and she thought, well, that's, that's too easy. To, he must have missed something. And so she, she pressed him on it, but he was absolutely sure that he had put his trust in the Lord. Well, I was home at the time. She went and got me out of my basement study and, and brought me out to bring out the big guns to see if I could, you know, find out where he really stood. But he was absolutely sure that he had put his trust in the Lord Jesus. Well, you know, the great thing about it is if you don't know where a person stands, this is true of little children as well. Instead of saying they are saved or they aren't saved, just give them the word of God because the word of God is a sword with two edges, and it will either convince them if they are or convict them if they're not. And so she said to him, you know, you need to be reading the Bible now. Oh, he said, Mrs. Nicholson, I'm not a reader. I don't even read the Reader's Digest. She said, well, this is your food. You know, you need this to, if, you, if you're following the Lord now, you need to be reading the Bible. He said, you should have told me that before because he said, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not a reader. So he got on his truck and away he went. But as he came around to the next street, there was, along with the garbage can, there was a, a big heavy box. And he wondered what was in the box and he opened it up and there was a brand new Bible still in the wrapper. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, God, I'll read your book. It was one of these uh, great big family Bibles, you know, with the big full color print, almost needed retractable wheels to haul it around. But, you know, Red showed up at our assembly and, and just to let you in on things there, our local church had been in a very poor area of the city. But as time went by, we had moved out into the suburbs a little and had built a nice architecturally designed building. And to tell you the truth, we really lost touch with the people that Jesus was talking about in this verse. Well, Reg, he brought those people back. He started bringing his friends out. And, you know, he showed up the first Sunday in the very best outfit he had, which happened to be a jumpsuit with a great big garbage truck logo on it and his great big massive Bible. And, you know, Reg thought everything was wonderful. He thought the Christians were wonderful. And he thought the singing was wonderful. And he thought the preaching was wonderful. And he found there was another local church in town. Their, their midweek meeting was Tuesday and ours was at that time Wednesday. He said, I'm going to have to go to both. I'm going to have to do double time to catch up with you people. And, you know, from that moment on, he just carried on for the Lord until the Lord took him home with cancer some years later. But as I often think of that situation and, and realize that very often, you know, as uh, Christians may very often start out poor, but um, they stop wasting their money and they, they become more industrious and they raise their children into the middle class. And sometimes we lose touch with the poor and we have to make this effort to reach out to them, the ones in the highways and byways, uh, who very often are ready to come, whereas the ones who were originally invited, the respectable folk, are just quite self-satisfied, thank you, and very often are not touched by the gospel. So, be encouraged. Look for opportunities. Ask the Lord to bring people into your life, perhaps from the highways and byways, and share with them the glorious news, that simple step, only believe 
to put their trust in the Lord Jesus and to see lives transformed by the glorious gospel and by the power of the Word of God.